Greetings, friends. David Marks here. An incredible new feature called Generative Remove was just added into Adobe Lightroom Classic. In this tutorial, I'll show you some examples where Generative Remove does incredible work, and I will explain some of the quirks of this new AI-powered tool. If you are ready to see something extraordinary today, then let's jump right in and let's get started. Removing something like that person walking down the beach would have required a trip over to a complex program like Adobe Photoshop. But now, with the new Generative Remove tool, we can make an unwanted element like this disappear without leaving Lightroom Classic. To make that person vanish, I'm going to open up the newly renamed Remove panel. In here, I'm going to activate the Remove tool which is represented by the icon furthest to the left along this mode bar. It's worth knowing that the remove tool can be used in two different modes. If you do not activate the brand new generative AI mode, then the remove tool will use its older content aware logic. The first time that you activate generative AI, a box like this will pop up where you'll need to agree to some new terms of service. Next, I will also turn on the Object Aware Selections option. With Object Aware turned on, I can paint a sloppy brush stroke over the area that I want to replace. You do not need to be too precise with this tool. In fact, in all of my experiments, I found that I get much better results when I intentionally select a slightly larger area than I actually need. But here, I've included an extra section of the beach where there's nothing that needs replacing. To fix that, I'm going to activate the Subtract From Mask option up here in the Mask Refinement area. Now, I'll paint away some of that extra red area at the bottom. Now that my selection looks good, I'm going to tap on the Apply button, and I'm going to wait for the Generative Remove AI to do its magic. That's amazing. And to see what an incredible job this tool has done, I'm going to zoom in even further. I could stop here, but check this out. If I tap on these little arrows, then we can see some of the other options that Adobe's AI has generated for me. Whenever you use this tool, the Generative Remove engine automatically creates three possibilities for you. All of these are pretty good but option two looks the most convincing to me. So I can close the remove panel, and now let me split my screen so that you can see a before and after. Wow, look at the way that the AI invented a plug of pixels that mimics the top of the wave, and it created a similar pattern down here in the reflection. That's simply amazing. There's more to learn though, so let's move on to another example. When I look at this photo, one of the first things that I notice are the names that have been painted on each of these fishing boats. Since I don't own any of these vessels, those details are unnecessary distractions that I want to remove. In the previous example, I did all of my object removal in a single stroke, but with this kind of scene, I think I'll get better results if I take these words out one section at a time. To zap the words little angel right here, I'm gonna tap on the letter Q on my keyboard. Q is the shortcut on a US keyboard for the remove panel. Next, I'm gonna hold down the command key on a Mac with one finger, and I'm gonna tap on the letter G with another. Command G is the new keyboard shortcut that activates or deactivates the generative AI removal mode. PC folks, use the control key instead of command on your keyboard. It's also worth pointing out that if it isn't already selected, I can press command on a Mac or control on a PC and the letter F on my keyboard to activate the object aware selection option. Now, I can use command and the plus key that's the addition symbol on my keyboard over by the number keys to zoom in further over this area. At this point, I'll do a little painting 
over the letters that I want to remove. If I've been too sloppy, I can hold down the Alt, that's the Alt Option key on a Mac, or the Alt key on a PC, to switch to the Subtract Mask refinement brush. Once I've cleaned up the selected area, I can tap the Enter or Return key on my keyboard to get the AI working. Wow, unlike any other cleanup tool that we've ever seen before, the generative AI here sensed that it was the words that I wanted to remove, and it left that line that's hanging down completely alone. To attack the yellow letters on the other side of the bow, I can hold the space bar on my keyboard to temporarily put away the remove tool and to get the hand. Now, if I click and drag, I can reposition the image, and when I let go of the space bar and the mouse, I'll have the remove tool again. This time, I'm going to paint over those letters, but before I start moving the mouse, I'm going to click and hold the command key. Using the command and paint trick on a Mac, or the control and paint trick on a PC, tells Lightroom that we want to bypass the mass refinement options and to start the AI up as soon as I let go of the left button on my mouse. I think that the results here are pretty good, but it's hard for me to see how well the AI did where that white selection ring covers the wooden pylon. To temporarily hide the selection ring, technically, it's called the tool overlay marker. I can tap on the letter H on my keyboard. Now, we can really see how the AI did at removing those letters, but not altering their surroundings. These initial results are acceptable, but I'm curious if one of the other variations might be even better. To cycle through my three options, I can come over here and tap on these little arrows. Option two, it's not as good as option one. Uh, option three is pretty good, but I can't say that it's a clear winner either. I must admit that I'm being a little fussy, but I'm curious if the AI can do even better. To find out, I'm going to tap on the refresh button here to force Adobe's AI witchcraft to create three more patches for this region. Now, I have three more options that I can try. That one looks perfect. Let me split my screen again so you can see what a marvelous job Lightroom has done here. At this point, I could keep working my way around this image, removing all of the words, but I think that you get the idea. What I want to emphasize before we move on is that this change is non-destructive and that we are still working on my original RAW file. I bring this up because if I decide to change the exposure of this image or any of my other develop settings, then those changes will be seamlessly added into that generative remove patch that I just created. From a workflow perspective, I think that using generative remove at the beginning of your image processing makes good sense, but it's comforting to know that you can tackle this step whenever you want using Lightroom Classic. Let me hop over to another example and show you one more handy trick. So far in this tutorial, I've been removing items where the AI could guess at what kind of pixels I want it to invent by looking at other parts of my original image. In this example, I want to prove that massive machine learning models are at play here, and that takes things to a whole new level. What I need to explain is that this is a stock photo. This is an image that I licensed, and I have never met or actually photographed this model. If I activate the Generative Remove tool by pressing the letter Q, and if I paint over those dark sunglasses, then Adobe's supercomputer will have to figure out what kind of information belongs here without any additional clues from this image. Adobe's AI knows that humans have eyes behind their glasses, and it even inferred in this scene that it should draw female-looking eyes. That's jaw-dropping. But wait, I also want to use this example to teach you a quick and easy way to compare one variation with another. When I flip through the variations here, I find that I like both number two and number one. 
Ultimately, I know that I'm going to have to choose one of these variations, but for now, I would like to see both of them side by side on my screen. Fortunately, doing this is easy if I open up the left hand side panel. A helpful keyboard shortcut to know at this point, by the way, is the F7 key. F7 shows or hides the left hand side panel in Lightroom Classic. Next, I'm going to come down to this moment in the history panel, and then I'm going to right click. Using a right click, I can bring up this secret menu, and then I can choose the option that says copy history step settings to before. Now, when I press the letter Y on my keyboard and hide the panels away, we can compare variation number one and variation number two on different sides of the screen. In this case, I like the variation on the left better, but there's some weird stuff going on here around her nose. So I'm going to press the letter Y to go back to single view. I'm going to open up the history panel again. I'm going to tap on that variation. And then I'll use the remove tool a second time, but at a smaller size to see if we can improve this area down in here. That looks much better. And the point I wanted to make is that if you want to see more than one option side by side, you can do that without duplicating your file or adding any additional complexity. Well, there you go. I hope that you found this deep dive into the new generative remove tool useful. If you haven't already, please follow my step-by-step -step instructions on how to update your Lightroom catalog and then give this amazing new technology a try. If you learned something today, then please leave us a like or a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.